G'day folks. Well, it's time to look at something other than electrolysis. And these are the generator outer poles, the fuel poles. Uh, obviously there's four of them. There are four iron laminated cores. Uh, each one's actually got a number stamped on it, which is good. Uh, those end pieces look like cast iron, not laminations. They've got four big rivets hammered through them. That one's got a three stamped on it, so that's number three. Uh, not too hard to clean up. The hard part is these uh, windings. The insulation is very fragile. I mean, you could probably compare it to trying to salvage a log book raised from the Titanic. There's bits of stuff falling off it everywhere and, and try not to break anything crucial. You can see the windings there. There's a coarse wire and some very thin twine. They just bind them up with rope and lacquer them in tar by the looks of it. It's got a black tar like substance on them. Obviously they're not injection molded plastic bobbins like you'd find on a conventional machine or transformer. So rewinding them is actually going to be quite difficult if I have to rebuild these windings. I'm going to try and run it as it is. I'll preserve the windings as best I can and fire it up but if they decide to have a meltdown and arc out then I'd have to build a form or something and reconstruct these as they would come from the factory insulation material all the way around fully wind it on a custom made armature armature winding machine or something yeah I talked to a rewinding expert and he said there's easily a couple of thousand dollars in copper alone let alone the time to set up and make all the winding equipment okay back to these again I uh, did some shopping this morning and got some self amalgamating tape which is sort of like this tar tape just wrap it up tight like stretch it and wrap it and it just sort of fuses together into one mass perfect for insulation and very hostile environments so that's modern equivalent of our lagging tape uh, adhesive lined heat shrink we'll try and reinstate some of these wires because once you start breaking this apart to fix it you just unleash all sorts of hell so that's going to be uh, taped back after it's been heat shrunk and then I'm just going to coat the whole lot in lacquer I'm using a um, polyurethane type lacquer ester pole I think somebody suggested polyurethane should do it uh, white high chem paint for the inside it's a epoxy enamel designed to go with this high chem spray build, uh, high build primer or spray primer and definitely going to look at getting that crack fixed. I was thinking of milling it flat at work, like mill this out square and then bolt a strap in there just to keep it together. Because welding cast iron like this can be tricky. You've got such a... this outer housing is like a spring and once you heat this area up it's just going to crack the weld again when it cools down again. So the whole thing has to go into an oven, heat up to about 350 degrees and then start welding it then you bury it in ashes and let it cool down naturally but unfortunately I've got a bearing, I've got lead solder or babbit or something around the outside um, that's all going to go to hell if I start overheating it so I'm going to go the strap method and just fill that with, with epoxy make it look fairly respectable and these things here will clean up alright they'll be black, green, white inside polished hardware and the windings on the rotors will also be hand painted green so yeah stay tuned for a bit more oh yeah by the way all of these windings read 18.5 ohms plus or minus 0.1 ohms so it's pretty good across the board and the insulation's pretty solid it's a nice tar type very robust a friend of mine said, just there was a motor rewinder said these things can sit out in the weather for decades and all that happens is rust builds up on here and locks the rotor. So as long, long as you free the rotor up, clean up the brushes and the commutator bars, you can run it just as it is. 
Westinghouse knew how to build them back then. And as far as Westinghouse England's records, well, I don't know, I haven't tried finding anything yet, but going through World War II, I'd say maybe Westinghouse got bombed during that time, particularly uh, being English. I mean, most big made, um, English industries were bombed to the ground during World War II. The Germans made a real mess of them. But I'm going to try and pursue that one and just see if Westinghouse England still has records of these. Only they'll tell me where it was shipped. I know where it was shipped. AP Sutherland in Melbourne. But I'd at least like to find a date based on its serial number.